What's up, guys? Welcome back to PE Periods with Animesh. I am Animesh. We are on episode nine, and as much as I do not want to call every episode the most important episode, but I realize that what we are doing is we are setting a good foundation of knowledge here, and with every single episode, we are basically diving deeper into the matrix, and you know, being more fundamental with our approach, answering the answering few of the more. fundamental questions that need to be answered if we are to you know have a good approach towards anything that's related to human conditions and health and fitness specifically right so in that sense i feel like this is a very benchmark episode in this series this episode is going to be very important and uh, in the last episodes i said that these episodes are especially important for coaches but i feel like this episode particularly is ep- is important for every single person so if you're a living breathing thinking human being this episode is going to be very 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 important for, for you because this gives you a really invaluable lens let me just be back in one second all right i'm back for it so this episode gives you a really invaluable lens so what i'm going to do is i'm so tempted to do this episode on youtube and as well as instagram because the point here is to get this knowledge out like i'm actually pal you know i'm actually visibly distressed and and actually i want to get this information out every single place possible on every single platform possible so that more and more people can understand what's going on here right so let's get to it let's get started um i'm just going to quickly share my screen here um how do i do that okay share screen let's get it going all right so in episode 9 we are talking about the biggest issue in health and fitness today right this episode is going to help you answer a lot of questions so we are talking about the biggest issue in health and fitness today and that is applying 2 plus 2 for logic to anything related to human conditions right you got to understand that 2 plus 2 equal to 4 logic does not apply to human beings let's talk about it all right so first let's let's set a base let's set a basis for our discussion let's understand what sets us apart from other lesser mammals right i'm just going to quickly put my screen here get back to it all right so what do you think sets us apart from other lesser mammals when i say lesser mammals i'm not taking a moral high ground here i'm just talking objectively about what sets us apart from other animals on this planet right humans because of how our brains have evolved because of how we have evolved we have the highest information processing capacity right it gives us the ability to think we have a four brain right that's basically like a super computer that other lesser mammals do not have um right so highest information processing capacity is a usp as human beings right this is what makes us makes us homo sapiens the rulers of planet earth it gives us the ability to think and deduce answers it gives us the ability to apply logic so that's why it's only human nature that we want to find quick logic and deduce quick conclusions to every single thing right whenever we look at anything we want to apply quickly available logic and deduce answers to it that's human nature that's completely fine that's completely fine because it's human nature right but what makes us human that very nature is also uh, you know it also it's it's not that handy when it comes to understanding complex phenomena such as human beings right so the same thing that makes us human the same nature that makes us human also sets us up for a major 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 reductionist approach whenever it comes to anything related to human conditions so that's what we're talking about today the biggest issue in health and fitness industry so you got to understand that our biggest asset our information our high high information processing capacity is also our biggest limiter whenever it comes to deducing answers to related related to health and fitness so i've written down a statement here this is like an equation it's a very simple equation what i what we have here is a statement that says 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 and what happens in the health and fitness industry is that knowingly or, un- or unknowingly right a lot of coaches a lot of professionals a lot of healthcare professionals i'm not just talking about fitness coaches i'm talking about doctors i'm talking about um the nutritionists i'm talking about psychologists i'm talking about any single any single professional in the healthcare industry it is a very common practice to apply 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 logic to human conditions let's talk about what it means let's look at 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 as a statement right what we have here as a statement let's just say that this is a system we are looking at a system right here right what are the key features of this system or the statement the first thing that you look here is understand here is that 
it is very easy to see that the numbers on the left hand side of the statement add up to the answer on the right hand side of the statement so we can say that the sum is equal to the parts so when we look at this system we can say that the sum of the system is equal to the parts of the system right it is very simple in nature it's as simple as it gets so this statement intrinsically is what we call a linear statement and what i mean by linear statements is that in linear statements the answer is going to be equal to the parts or it's going to be proportional to the parts so when you look at the parts of the system it's easy to predict the outcome of the system right key features of linear systems linear systems are very simple in nature in linear systems sum is equal to or proportional to the parts of the system it is easy to predict outcomes looking at the part of the system right when you look at 2 is equal to 2 4 you sort of know what's going to happen it's going to be 4 the answer is going to be 4 it's that simple it's that easy so you can establish a very simple cause and effect relationship right 2 is equal to plus 2 4 caused the answer uh, the basically the outcome that's 4 Two is two plus two is equal to four. Extremely simple in nature, right? Now let's see what's the difference between this and humans or non-linear system. So we got linear systems on one hand, we got non-linear systems on one hand, and what's the key difference? This is sort of how, like how linear systems work. You have two plus two is equal to four, and this is how non-linear systems work, which sort of looks like two plus rainbow is equal to different uh, bananas differentiated, right? or uh, delta bananas it, none of it makes sense and that basically tells you what non linear systems are all about non linear systems are going to be complex in nature they are very complex in nature they have complex so whatever parts you have in a non linear system when you observe a non linear system the parts of the non linear system looking at the parts of the non linear system they interact in various complex manners and they have as a result they have very disproportional outcomes so in non linear systems it is extremely hard to just add up the parts of the system and predict the outcome as a result you cannot establish a simple cause and effect relationship it is very hard to establish a simple cause and effect relationship and that is intrinsically where lot of healthcare professionals miss the forest for the trees they try to apply linear logic and they fail to understand that you cannot add up you cannot apply linear logic to non linear systems right some examples of your uh, non linear systems are going to be the stock market right it's going to be weather system it systems it's going to be human populations and any biological organisms so what is the common sort of like the common denominator in all of these things in all of these things the common denominator is that the parts that are participating in the system the interactions that these parts have are so complex and so infinite in nature that it is very 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 difficult to to establish a simple cause and effect right these systems are anything but simple in nature they are very 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 complex why because this common denominator in all of these examples that we looked at here stock markets weather systems storm systems human populations any kind of biological organisms there are so many things participating in the system these systems are comprised of so many participants and so many players and the interactions between these players and these parts are so complex and so infinite in nature that you just cannot simply by looking at them you cannot predict an outcome right the outcomes are very disproportionate let's look at humans and human conditions and what makes us non linear in nature right But when you think about a human first of all whenever you think about humans humans are not isolated in nature when we when we talk about the statement 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 the 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 is not going to be affected by the temperature today it is not going to be affected by the people that are around uh, you know the statement to let's say 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 exists somewhere it's not going to be affected by other 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 statements right they do they would have no effect on that but whenever we are thinking about any any of these more complex systems right storms weather weather system stock markets human beings you got to think about the ecosystem as well because we are not existing in isolation we are existing within an ecosystem so it's not just about us it's about our immediate surroundings as well that's what ecology tells you ecology tells you that you are always subject to whatever interactions are happening between you and things that are in your environment it's going to be your temperature it's going to be the relations that relationships that you have it's going to be the objects that you use right so being human is not just about you and what you to become what you become eventually become or at or at any given point of time 
whatever you are about as a person is not just about you it's about your interactions with the different entities in your environment as well so it's your about it's about your ecology so whenever you're talking about humans as a system as non linear systems the work begins at begins by looking at your complete ecology right so the that is the first thing that you look at as a system and then it just gets way more complex because it's about the whole ecosystem which is basically you your immediate surroundings and your interactions with things in your immediate surroundings it's about you as an organism so right we are going deeper into the frames but at every single frame it's the same thing that's happening you as an organism you are made up of dif- different organ systems that's what organisms are right organisms are a whole bunch of organ systems that are interacting together every single organ is basically a system of tissues that are interacting together every single tissue is basically a system of cells that are interacting together every for example humans humans are made up of you know the liver the stomach and what not a liver is made up of hepa- hepat- hepatocytes i don't know how to pronounce it pronounce it hepatocytes so hepatocytes are basically uh, you know fundamental cells of the liver that basically you know make up make up the liver so those are cells organism is a whole bunch of organs together organs is a whole bunch of tissues together tissues are a whole bunch of cells together cells are a whole bunch of you know microorganisms together there are things that are that are happening so this just goes on infinitely deeper into the matrix every single cell is basically a whole bunch of organelles microorganisms together every single mo- microorganisms is then made up of molecules molecules are then made up of subatomic particles subatomic particles are then made up of quarks and it just keeps going you know that's where we that's where we know the limit exists right now that's what we are limited by but eventually we are just going to be able to you know sub categorize that as well and we we'll realize that this never stops right this never stops there are just things that are made up of a whole bunch of things and you can you, you know that that's like a never ending cycle so just think about this sheer complexity when you think about what it means to be a person that that is existing on planet earth or that is existing in space and time just think about the sheer complexity of what it means to be you right all of these interactions then are also affected by time at any given point of time it's not just about the space that we exist in we are also affected by time so at this given point of time who i am about you you know who i am about as a person is going to change because you know 20 minutes down the line i'm going to be a completely different person because i i would have been effect, affected by time and as a result and as a result of all of these complex interactions i will have adapted in some way or form so our non linear nature is what truly makes us individual all of us like to preach about individuality we understand what individuality is but this is what makes us truly individual the golden rule to think about here is that whenever you think about any human condition you got to know that the sample size is always n is equal to 1 that is what being human means right so you cannot take a simple piece of logic and apply it to a whole bunch of people because understand that there are all these complex interactions happening and everything is being affected by time so so you know depending on depending on how you have adapt how you have adapted as a person that's going to depend on your ecosystem things in your surroundings that's going to depend on how the organ systems in your body are reacting to that how they are interacting how they are co adapting together right and how they are coming up with a solution and whatever is happening whatever the adaptations you are making whoever you are about, about as a person at any given point of time first of all is going to differ for you know different frames of time and is going to differ for every single person so you're you're constrained by time you're constrained by space you're constrained by the kind of adaptations that your subsystems are making and you're constrained by your own ecosystem as well depending on what you are interacting with your in your surroundings so all of these complexities basically is what makes you individual and this takes you the farthest away from any kind of linear logic that can be applied to you now let's look at some linear pieces of logic that are usually applied to people right that usually people come up with why because it's very easy to do that that's what we do as people we have certain biases we have certain places where we get our information from and depending on those biases we want to quickly jump to conclusions we want to find the path of least resistance we want to find the piece of logic that makes the most amount of sense linearly and it's going to be linear why because if it's a simple piece of logic it's going to be linear in nature and then we want to apply it to whatever human conditions are possible and let's look at some of those pieces of logic so let's look at some linear statements related to human beings some statements that people make 
you will hear the statement is as old as time that rice makes you fat do you really think it is as simple as eating rice and getting fatter right think about like you know have and you know uh, there's this there's this saying and there's there, there's this common saying in every single i don't know if this if this is uh, uh, you know this is specific to indian households or india as a country i think it might just be a common theme every single where where you have people saying that why do you not get fat and why do i breathe air and you know my weight increases and i see you eating junk every every single day and you are not you know you are not uh, you are not gaining weight why does that happen what you know how can you account for this huge variability in how people gain weight and do not gain weight if it was as simple as eating rice and getting fat you know you would just simply feed a person rice and they would become fat right so you got to think about that just stopping you know stopping your rice consumption is not going to help you lose weight why because that's a linear piece of logic that's a reductionist idea that is based on fallacies that is based on the wrong approach it is not as simple as that you got to look at the ecosystem of the person you got to look at the various interactions the person is making with you know how the person has adapted how do you look at that how do you look at that there has to be a different model for it the linear logic that a lot of healthcare professionals apply it doesn't make sense another piece of linear statement that a lot of people you know like to throw around is that and this is like this is the most all of these statements the I've, I've picked up these particular statements because these are probably the most common statements ever a lot of a lot, lot of parents and a lot of people will tell you that lifting weights above your head or something like that is going to hinder growth height growth for kids right now think about that what do people think when they say that lifting weights is going to you know uh uh hinder your height growth or the converse of that is going to be hanging is going to help you increase your height is it as simple as that let's understand what people are you know people are thinking in their heads the kind of linear logic people are applying in their heads when they say things like that you know people think that if if you do something as simple as lift a heavy weight over your body it's going to compress your body down right or if you just hang and elongate your body it's going to help you help you increase your height or your length as a person in some way that's you understand how that's very linear in nature right pull and the length increases push and you compress something right those things might be true for malleable metals and malleable materials but it's not definitely not true for humans because when you think about humans just just as an example your height growth is not just dependent on how how much weight you are putting on your body or how much you are elongating your body it depends on your hormones it depends on your genetics it depends on your the kind of food that you're eating i'm not saying that height depends on that but i'm just give you example right the 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 outcome of your height being whatever it is is so complex that it is disproportional to the parts that you know make up for what your height is so you cannot just say that hanging increases your height or compressing your height down with your weight decreases your height it depends on your hormones it depends on all of these various interactions that is have you know happening at every single frame every single frame frame is improving your vitamin is improving your immunity as simple as taking a vitamin c supplement it is not when you look at immunity immunity as an outcome is going to be based on heavily it's going to be based on every again it's going to be based on every single thing you got to look at your ecosystem you got to look at your organism you got to look at the organs and the kind of ways that they are interacting you know different kind of ways in which the organs and the uh, these different things are interacting with each other you got to look at hormones and different things in the body different you know micro processes in the body that are tightly regulating a lot of these processes and you know the kind of variations that exist in there so my point being or another linear statement is that x y z exercise is the best exercise for strength and speed or this exercise is you know top 3 exercises to help you do this top 3 exercises to help you do that whatever outcome you know the outcome of you improving your speed as a person or you improving your strength as a person is not going to be based on the top 3 exercises so there's no one single exercise that helps every single person become faster or stronger right doesn't happen that way that's a linear piece of logic that's reductionist in nature it doesn't work that way if that makes sense what are the takeaways here the takeaways here is that time dependent and complex linear complex non linear nature of our existence it makes it extremely difficult to reduce the root cause for any human condition down to a set of finite causes right you cannot say that your immunity is what it is because of not you know because you are not taking a vitamin c supplement you cannot say that your eyesight is becoming weak because you you are in front of the television every single day yeah that's another piece of linear logic 
lot of it, for a lot of you guys it's going to be hard to absorb especially for a lot of your parents is going to be hard to absorb but it doesn't work that way it doesn't work that way it is infinitely difficult to assign simple linear causality to any human condition that applies for everyone right you cannot establish a simple cause and effect relationship and then you can you know then go on to say that this is how every person single person person should, should do it if you have big eyesight stop watching tv and your eyesight will improve or it won't worsen doesn't happen that way it does not happen that way whatever your eyesight is is an outcome is a disproportional outcome of so many different interactions happening within your body and within you know in between your body and different entities that are in your ecosystem that it is infinitely difficult to assign a simple cause and effect relationship right at least at present we are limited by technology and our understanding to be able to do that when we have the technology or when we have models where we are able to able to basically factor in all of these different you know variables then my we might be able to do it but right now it's not possible to do it and this is where the healthcare industry is missing the forest for the trees this is where we are going intrinsically wrong with our approach right we are giving people fringe solutions isolated solutions for individualistic issues every individual and their subsystems their organs their organ interactions their tissues their hormones their microorganisms depending on their ecosystem and their journey their individual journey through space and time every single individual individual has adapted in individual different ways this is what makes us individuals you got to understand that right all of this complexity what kind of approach do we have now we have established that we have a wrong approach we have a reductionist approach in the healthcare industry but what do we do right this also answers a very important question that i got asked today on instagram that what differentiates a good coach from a bad coach right what differentiates how do you know that you're getting good help this is how you know right anybody that is applying the first principles method of thinking to any solving any kind of uh, condition related to humans or non linear systems whenever that is happening you know you're in good hands right so how to approach solving human conditions and how to find answers to health and fitness questions you got to you got to have the first principles approach what is the first principles approach i'm going to give you the short Uh, you know the short answer here but i want everybody to go and start educating yourselves because doing that itself is a part of the first principles approach right what it's it's a powerful way of thinking it's actually considered one of the most powerful ways of thinking lots of detective work is being done on the first principles way of thinking started started i think aristotle started it lots of aristotelians are doing it elon musk does it all of all the great thinkers sherlock holmes just as an example any kind of detective works that detective work that happens happens via the first principles approach so the first principles approach is a trail basing approach right it's when you apply the first principles way of deduct, deducing an answer first of all it takes you away from a linear approach a linear way of thinking and it shifts you more towards you know more towards the correct way of approaching non linear entities and non linear systems right what do you what do you do when you apply the first principles approach is first of all you limit you challenge all your limiting beliefs so whatever you whatever biases you have first of all you try to understand what biases you have you try to understand where you are limited right and then you gather fundamental knowledge that is required to view your problem from a correct lens so you got to to be able to do that you first have to challenge your own beliefs you first have to accept there has to be acceptance that wherever your information is coming from whatever answer that you have come up whatever linear piece of logic that you have come up with you need to challenge that belief right you need to be able to prove that wrong or you at least need to try then you need to gather fundamental knowledge to form a lens to view your complex problem and then you need to have a need to build a completely new path towards a solution you need to think about possibilities instead of trying to find out the root cause you need to think about solutions instead of trying to find the root cause right and this is how you basically reverse engineer problems and this is not going to be a easy process you have to keep reiterating there's going to be an iteration understand that you know you never there's no absolutism abs- absolutism in this process you're not going to get to the answer in the first iteration itself but what you do is it's it's incremental in nature when you when you when you try to do when you have do the first iteration you got to gather knowledge when you gather knowledge your your ability to look at that is going to improve right now you have more knowledge to look at it then you go back to it that question and you do another iteration you do another iteration with every single iteration you keep you know removing you keep understanding where you were limited from your biases 
so with each iteration you will be able to remove your biases and with each iteration you will gather more knowledge a better lens to look at your problem and your answer the efficiency of your answer is going to improve and you're going to keep moving towards the solution and this is the kind of approach that you got to have if you are in the hands of someone who has this acceptance who has this acceptance of the huge 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 complexity that exists whenever any human condition is you know human condition is uh, basically concerned that's when you know you're in good hands that's when what differentiates a good coach from a bad coach it's just the sheer acceptance of the fact that you're standing in front of a mammoth you're standing in front of a mammoth of a problem and you got to let your you got to shed your egos and understand that you do not have the answer but you have to find the solution right you do not have the answer but you have to find the solution if somebody has this approach if you can have this approach to anything related to being human you know you're you, you are on the correct path if you can properly apply first principles way of thinking you know you're on the correct path and this is the only way you can approach non linear entities and non linear systems if that makes sense guys this episode is a very very important episode to the four or five people that are listening i urge you to you know sit other people down and make them watch this episode discuss have discussions start your first principles approach right here right challenge your limiting beliefs go back to you know go think about what uh, what linear pieces of logic you were applying to different problems if you think that rice makes you fat then try to understand where is that information coming from what is your bias going into it where did you get that information from you know understand try to gather knowledge about the process the physiology the you know the basically the process of how you gain fat or how you lose fat when you have that knowledge you will be able to look at your condition a little better when you challenge your limiting beliefs you will be able to shed away those limiting beliefs and you will be able to get down to the fundamental truth which is all it is about it is about finding the fundamental truth and it is about accepting that you are standing in front of a fucking mammoth and you have no idea you know what the answer is you will never have the answer but you can find a solution if that makes sense that was episode 9 for you little heavy little heavy but very important every single person on the face of this planet needs to see this episode they need to watch this episode and they need to understand what the hell is going on here right this is onimesh signing out i might be going crazy i don't know